What's up guys, Tyler here from Civitai.com and today we are going to walk you through an Animate LCM video to video workflow for Animate Diff and Comfy UI. Now this workflow will allow you to take an existing video and do a complete style transfer to it using either just prompting or reference images from the IP adapter, and it has control nets, it has a high res fix, so you can get good upscaling out of it, as well as a face swapper if you want to keep your subject's face or put someone else's face on your subject from an image. Now, this workflow does require at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM. If you have less than that, use it at your own risk, and you might have to find a few workarounds. Without any further ado, let's hop into a computer. I'm gonna walk you guys through it. And a special shout out to Sir Spence and Patches Flows, two of our community members who helped me with a few of the finer points of getting this thing hooked up. I'm gonna put their Instagram handles right here. Please be sure to check them out on Instagram. Let's hop into the computer. All right, guys, so we are in the workflow right now. A little housekeeping first. This tutorial is assuming that you already have an instance of Comfy UI installed on your computer. This is not going to be a how to install Comfy UI. This is not going to be a how to for the basis for the this is not going to be a how to for the basics of Animate Diff. However, I will leave some links in the description down below to some videos and articles from Civitai.com and from some other really great YouTube creators that will teach you everything you need to know about the basics of Animate Diff, Animate LCM, and how to install Comfy UI. So if you are brand new to this, check the links, go watch and read those first, and then come back here. But right now, let's hop into this Animate LCM workflow and let's talk about it. And I'm gonna walk you guys through how it's built and how to use it. And by the end of this, you should be able to make some dope video to videos for social media or for whatever. So let's get into it. Now, this is what the entire workflow looks like. It is not very big at all. And I tried to build this out as simply as possible while I was putting it together and a couple of my buddies were helping me with some of those finer details, shout out Sir Spence and shout out Patches Flows. Go check them out. They make great stuff on social media and they're just super talented in general. Now, the workflow starts here. As you can see, all of these different groups, that's what we call these colored boxes here. These different groups are color coded so that the separation is easy and they are numbered and labeled so you know what each group is and what order you should be looking at everything in. So as long as you just work your way down the chain and boom, 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 you should be good to go and it should be super easy. So let's start right here with group one, which is your video source slash your resolution. So the first thing we want to do here is load our video. So all you do is click choose video to upload and it's gonna bring up your browser. This is where you pick the video you're gonna be working on. Now, the only numbers you need to really worry about here is your frame load cap, skip first frames and select every in. So let's talk about what each one of those do. Frame load cap means how many frames of this video do you want Animate Diff to render? If I put 50 in here, if I just punch in 50, it's only going to render 50 frames of the video. Skip first frames is how many frames do you want Animate Diff to skip before it renders? So if I was to put 100 in here and hit Q prompt, well, it's going to render only 50 frames, but it's going to render those 50 frames from frame 101. So it's gonna skip the first 100 frames and render the next 50. But we keep that at zero. Best practice, that is great if you're working on a longer video and before you run the whole thing, you want to test specific parts of the video so you can have a better idea of how the whole video will come out either for consistency or for your control net settings. Let me put this light on, I feel like it's 
Boom, now we're a little bit more moody. Okay, now select every nth frame means how many frames do you want it to render at a time? So if you have one, that means that animate diff is going to render every single frame of the video. This will give you the most movement accurate and smoothest video output. If you put two, then animate diff is going to render every second frame. That means it's going to skip a frame. As that number gets bigger, you're going to get more of like a choppy, kind of like broken apart animation. I always keep mine at one. Do as you will with that. If these numbers are at zero frame load cap, that means it's going to render the whole video. Skip first frames zero. That means it's not going to skip any frames. It's going to render the video from beginning to end. So that is your video upload node. Right above that, we have your width and your height nodes. This is for your base resolution. I typically render all of my videos in vertical format because social media, everything is vertical. And I do that at a resolution of 512 by 896. This is my, this is my low resolution nine by 16 aspect ratio. So make those numbers, whatever you want. If you're doing a 16 by nine wide video, then you could just flop these. It would be 896 in the width, 512 by the height. And then the upscale image node, you don't really have to worry about this. You just don't have to touch it. So at the bottom of the load of the source video, you have your Laura stacker. I have this set to have five Lauras available for you. So you would just have to click right here. And this should be pulling from your Laura folder that you have linked to your comfy directory. So all my Lauras are in here. You have, you can select the Laura and then you have the model strength and the clip strength. I find that if you leave the clip strength at zero and you just adjust the model strength that you will get similar results to what you would get with a LoRa as if you were just using it in like automatic 1111 and generating an image. So I like to keep my things as simple as possible and keep as little variables as possible so I can get to actually creating videos and making art. So do what you want with that. That is your LoRa stacker and that concludes group one. So just to recap, you have your source video, you have your resolution and your aspect ratio, and you have your Laura's. And a matter of fact, let me actually change the title right there and also put in Laura's boom. Now group two, your model slash animate diff loader. So this is where your animate diff motion model loader is. And this is also where you choose what model or checkpoint you want to use for your render as well as your VE, okay? As well as your VE. But I'm pretty sure we all use this 840,000 VE. Maybe use an anime one if like it's something super specific to you, but almost everyone I've interacted with uses the 840,000 VE. Now, Something important to note because this is an animate LCM workflow. This is not a normal animate diff V2, V3 workflow. You need to download and have the animate diff LCM motion model. That will be in a link in the description in the article that Inner Reflections AI wrote. Shout out to Inner Reflections AI. All of her resources, if you need to learn how to use Animate Diff and do video to video with it, she makes the best articles that she posts on Civitai.com. Link to her profile and her articles will be in the description below. If you have any questions or you just need basic knowledge about this, go read her articles. She is a valuable contributor to the community with everything regarding Animate Diff, video to video, and just workflows in general. Go check out her profile, links in the description, and leave her a nice comment because she does a lot. So th this needs to be the Animate LCM model. Mine, when I downloaded it from um, the link in her article was called SD15T2. 
T2V beta. I just didn't change the name, but that's what that is. Your beta schedule needs to be LCM square root linear. Okay, so boom. Motion scale should stay at one. You have one animate diff motion Laura if you would like to use it. I typically don't use them on video to video outputs, but it's there if you want it. All you would have to do is change your strength up to one and choose what animate diff motion Laura you want. I'm gonna change that back to zero because that's not for me. And in your efficient loader here, this is where you choose your model and your VE. Now, something important to note here. I am using a Photon LCM specific model that was trained by Civitai community member, Machine Delusions, AKA Phil. Shout out to him. He is another community member that provides a lot of great resources. Link to this model will be in the description of the video below. If you use the Photon LCM model, you do not need to use the LCM LoRa because there is an LCM LoRa that again, I did not rename just yet, but this will be linked in the description below as well. If you are not using the Photon LCM model, you need to have the LCM LoRa loaded in here and you need to play with your strengths, but I would recommend starting at one and one and working your way down. This does add a lot of contrast and can overburn or oversaturate the images. So you're going to have to play with these based on your video and figure out what works best for you. But if you use the Photon LCM model, which provides amazing results, you do not have to use that LCM LoRa and it will definitely oversaturate and overburn your image. That is box two. You're, you're choosing your model, your VE, as well as your animate diff options. But most of that part should be set for you. You just need to make sure you download your animate LCM motion model and your animate LCM LoRa. Then underneath that, we have group three, which are all of these yellow boxes, which are our control nets. Now I have five control nets in here because personally I never use canny for anything and it's, I just don't. So if you want to add canny, feel free, but we have line art, soft edge, depth, and open pose as well as one for QR code monster slash control gif. Now, of course, to use any of these control nets, you need to have the control net models downloaded and installed into your control net folder. I typically use two control nets at a time unless I'm doing one of the QR code optical illusion videos, in which case I'll usually only have this one turned on. Now, in all of these control net boxes, um, we have these fast bypassers. And you might have, if you don't have the RG3 node pack, you're going to have to install that in your Comfy UI manager. And all you have to do to enable and disable these things is click the enable button, boom. When they're pink, the group is disabled. When it's, when you can see the colors, they're enabled. So as if you wanna use soft edge and line art, boom, enable, disable. Right now we like using open pose and depth. So we're gonna leave that on. If we wanted to just do QR code monster, Boom, and then we pick QR code monster. If we want to do our control GIF, then we select our control GIF. But again, we're going to leave on open pose and depth. Now, that's group three, control nets. And again, control net values, you're going to have to mess with that. I can't tell you what the best values for your video is. That is all up to you. Okay, so group four, your IP image adapter. Now, for those of you that don't know, the IP adapter is essentially reference images that you feed it and it will try to build the animation and the video off of the images that you put in your IP adapter. All you gotta do is either drag an image from your browser into one of these boxes or you click choose file to upload and you select an image from anywhere on your computer. Now you can have either four separate images you could have two images for your character and two images for your background, or you could just have four of the same image, which I have here. Now, these nodes 
that they're connected to, the prepare image for clip vision, you have a crop position selector, which will allow you to tell the IP adapter what part of that particular photo you want it to crop into and focus on to nail the style. I, in general, like to just keep it on pad. That way it takes the style from the entire image. But if you're trying to do something very specific, play, ar play around with the cropping and see what kind of interesting results you can get. The weights, I typically leave at one. And your weight up here for your apply IP adapter from encoded, this is the weight you're gonna wanna mess with. Um, the LCM workflow tends to be able to push the IP adapter much harder. So you can make the weight from anywhere from like 0.7 up to like 1.15 or 1.2. And you can even add a little bit of noise into it. But again, these are all things that you just got to play with so that you can figure out what fits your style. And then, of course, for the load clip vision and the IP adapter model, you're going to need the IP adapter plus stable diffusion 1.5 bin file. You can download this from the IP adapter GitHub and you are going to need the SD15 PyTorch underscore model dot bin that goes into your clip vision folder in Comfy. This file will be linked um, in a Google Drive link that I will put in the description below. So everything should be there and you should be able to just download everything that you need. Um, then you also have your IP adapter crop previews. This is going to give you a preview of exactly what Stable Diffusion is going to look at as it's referencing your photo. If you crop into the top, the center, the left, the right, um, you'll see the crop and what it actually looks like in here. Uh, this little control, oh, that is a spelling error. See, that's why we do these things. This control net stack slash free you, this is just where the control nets are hooked up into. And then I personally like the free you node. I feel like it helps smooth out the animation a little and make it more consistent. So that we just don't touch. Then box number five, we have your prompt. Green box, positive prompt. And you can prompt travel this if you like. There is a certain syntax for that. Um, we will go over that right now. So let's say at frame 50, I wanted the prop to change to, let's just say, a cat. <laughs> well, the syntax here for your prompt, quotations, the frame number, all videos start at frame zero, quotations, semicolon, space, quotations, your prompt with all the different tokens separated by a comma, quotations. If you're only using one prompt, you end it at the quotations and you do not put a comma at the end of it. If you put a comma at the end of it, you are going to get an error and it will not run. If you are prompt traveling, if at frame 50, 50 we want to switch to a cat, well, then we put 50 in the quotations and a cat. You need to have a comma there. If this is the last prompt, no comma at the end. So just remember that. Rewind that little part as many times as you need to watch it to understand what, what I just said and like let that sink in. A, there have been many a times where I've gotten stupid errors for stupid little se spelling or syntax mistakes in my batch prompt scheduler that have taken me longer than I would like to admit to figure out and find exactly what the issue was. So batch prompt scheduler, this is your positive prompt. The pretext, anything written in the pretext prompt box will come before everything written in your batch prompt scheduler. Everything in your apt text prompt box will come after everything in your batch prompt scheduler. That means if you have a, a 10 different prompt prompt travel, 
whatever is in the pretext and the app text will come before and after each one of those prompts. So they're all getting these same kind of um, descriptors. Okay, everything down here, don't worry about it. And then the red box, of course, is your negative prompt. If you want to use any embeddings, you need to use this syntax, embeddings or textual inversions. It's embedding, semicolon, and then the file name. All the tokens separated by commas, and then all the stuff that you do not want to see in your render, and hopefully it doesn't end up there. So that is number five. That is your positive and negative prompt. Now, number six, your case sampler and your high res fix, AKA your upscaler. So the case sampler, this is something to note because we are doing this based off of animate LCM. The LCM workflow requires very low steps and very low CFG. You're going to need to play with these numbers and find the right mixture for your video. However, a good place to start is a CFG of between one to two with steps of eight to 12. The denoise, you're gonna to wanna to leave at one. Your sampler needs to be on the LCM and your scheduler should be this SGM uniform for the best results with the animate LCM, at least from what I have seen so far. Um, and then of course you have your seed. You can either randomize it or you can um, stick to the stable seed. I personally always like staying on a stable seed because it just makes it easy to iterate and really get the animation to what I want it to be. That is your case sampler. And then we have your high res fix script. So this is the upscaler. Um, what I have it set to and what will be uploaded with it, the settings that are in it are the settings that have given me the best upscale results so far. So I'm rendering my low res video at 512 by 896. After it goes through my high res fix, I get a high res video at 768 by 1344. And then I can take that and upscale it again in automatic in a batch image to image or run it through another upscaler in Comfy to get it to a full 1080 resolution. So I would recommend not messing with that. But again, all of this is open to be iterated on and hopefully you can make it better than it currently is. And then you can share it back with me. That's why I'm putting this out there. Then number seven, we have the reactor face swapper. Everything that is in here are the settings I would recommend. Um, all you gotta do is drag and upload an image of the subject's face that you want to use in here. Now, word of caution, some people are having a very difficult time installing the reactor node. If it is giving you any trouble, I would recommend probably just erasing this group and just ditching it. It might not be worth the time. I didn't have, well, I had to like try to install it and uninstall it and install it maybe like five times before it actually installed and it's been working ever since but a lot of people seem to have a lot of issues with it. If you happen to be one of them, I would say just nix it and forget about the face swapper. But it's there again, all you have to do, upload an image of your subject's face right there. And I wouldn't touch any of these and all of the um, face models should be in there if you have these nodes installed. And then we have our video combine. So this is where you get your output. I have this set to a frame rate of 30. And yeah, so I mean, this is what the output of this video was. So we had our dancer girl right here. We had our four reference images of this kind of like 80s looking sci-fi athlete girl. And this was using open pose and depth. And I think that looks pretty Good, and it loops perfectly thanks to the magic of Animate Diff. And then as I'm trying to get a project going and iterating, what I will do here and what this box for, number eight, the preview gallery, I will 
control and drag my video combine out right here and just copy it over into here. That way, as I am testing things and reiterating, I can compare all my versions of the video. So that is the Animate LCM vid to vid workflow. This is going to be available to be downloaded on my Civitai.com profile. The, that link, of course, will be in the description. And I really hope that you guys can make some cool stuff with this. And when you make cool stuff with this, please tag at Hello Civitai on social so we can share your videos. And yeah, we will see you guys in the Twitch stream. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tyler. This is Civitai.com. Follow us at Hello Civitai on all social media platforms. And we're out. Go make something cool. Peace.